This is the Sanguli Resort in Salou. I'm going to take you on a little tour round to see all the various highlights, features, the bars, restaurants, uh, the pools, to see what this place has to offer. It's a beautiful day in Salou today. We're hitting about 27, 28 degrees. Um, so let's get on with it. Okay, so we're at the entrance to the park here. It's just off a fairly busy dual carriageway, but instantly you're gonna see all the Africa themes. But up ahead, luckily, we have the land train that's just coming around. I'll see if I can capture it in the video. You should be able to see it just up ahead there. It's the green train. This goes all around the park um, every so often. It's not always going round, but there's a timetable where you can actually see where it's going and it stops at various points around the different zones of the park over here is a little stop where you can get tours now this area over here is where all the bikes are um, for rental uh, i'll put, flash the prices up on screen um, when i can uh, but we're getting towards the front of the resort now this is a, a crucial bit because this is where all the taxis come we're at the north end of the resort now not the south which is closest to the beach now, I believe you can get taxis and the planner bus down there, but generally speaking, this is where the taxis come into, just by these giraffes. They can be booked in reception and they'll give you a number for that taxi and your driver will pull up and uh, you just check the number, hop in to whatever your destination. They're pretty good. Um, and the latest, longest we've had to um, wait is probably about 10 minutes or so. So we're heading up the main sort of stretch getting towards the reception. You're gonna see the reception coming up on the left. So I will just hammer it to there. It's nice and clean, this resort. There looks to be a few people checking in today. So we'll just spin it around. So you can see the reception. I'm not gonna go in because there's a lot of people um, checking in. You can just see over there. It's a lovely wooden building. Again, the Africa theme's still going. It's a nice seating area over there, and you can see, you can possibly see that um, Sangul is celebrating 50 years of uh, the resort. That's 72 to 22. So they're giving it little seeds to plant at home for free, which is a really nice touch. If we spin around, over here is one of the few restaurants. I think this is a Victoria restaurant. Um, there's inside and outside seating. It's also a bit of a sports bar. There's some tennis going on on the um, the TV over there, but we tended to eat outside on this sort of terrace, which is really lovely. Plenty of shade. Um, so if you're not a total sun lover, you can get out of the sun. And it's just when you're eating, it's quite nice to be not um, that in direct sunlight anyway. So I'm just gonna take you down to the main pool at this end so this is this is the africa pool unsurprisingly and you can see it is very busy today um it's got three main slides and some african good theming with the elephants at the front there's two pools here one's walking um from shallow to deep and like i said the, the slides on the far side you queue up um by the by the front of the rock white slide and there are two different intensities and then there's some small slides on the far side for the little ones. So I'm just gonna walk around the pool. So there's all these grass areas with sunbeds, loads of sunbeds. We've never had any problems getting the sunbeds. And you can see everybody's in the pool today. It's just coming up about 11 o'clock and it's probably about 26, 27 degrees here. Um, I think I mentioned before, but there's um, little slides for the, the little ones over there. A couple of slides. Um, if you've got sort of, you know, under under six or sevens, they're great. And the, the pool is shallow enough to, uh, to let him play safely. Um, but you can just see the elephant themes and the slides at the top and uh, everybody seems to be enjoying yourself on this scorching hot day. Um, if you look in the background, you can just see the mountains, which is a really nice um, beach rather than looking up at high rises. So we'll move on from Africa. So this is the Africa Pool. Okay. So as we head out of Africa, there is a bar over the side there that's that's not operational at the moment, but I suspect when it gets to lunchtime, it'll be um, up and running. We're going to head down the 
ramp and I'm gonna take you through not to the Africa main section but around towards the amphitheatre and the other pools. Um, it's a long stretch here I'm just gonna so we'll carry on here And you can see over to the right there, there is some of the barley huts. There's three different stands of these huts. Um, they're in the Polynesia region. Um, they split it into four different zones, the Mediterranean, Africa, Carib and Polynesia. I'll take you through each of those zones, but at the moment um, we're walking through um, the Eurocamp section. Um, you can see all the um, Eurocamp lodges going up either side. Um, some of them down the left hand side are the XL ones. Some in the middle are the, just the normal Azures. They're three and two bed respectively. Um, it's a fairly uh, decent sized section, but it is very separate from the style of these other bungalows. Um, now, just on our left, you can see the actual camping zone. There is a large campsite, so for anybody with uh, trailers and for uh, a normal camping there's a large large section that people utilize that all nationalities that come in here so heading across the main stretch now this pool that we are coming to is really aimed at the little ones so you can see just popping over the top of that white building um, is this huge fab structure that um, with a water tipping bucket on the top which the kids absolutely love. Um, it's got two separate pools, um, a couple of slides, not particularly intense, plenty of sunbeds around the actual um, actual pool area itself and nice and shallow. If I just spin that round to the right here, you can see there's a little adventure playground um, with the sand base making it pretty safe for kids. We found it was a little bit high on some of the bits that if they fell off it might be a bit of a, a tough landing but um, but generally speaking it's, it's a good bit of fun for all the kids there. Okay so we're gonna walk back down and now we're gonna take you towards the amphitheatre. So walking down the main stretch this tends to be the area where most people get in and out of the park um, but there are several routes out of here. Um, this will lead you pretty much down to the um, main reception at the south end of the park towards the beach. You can see, if I just pan over to the right, all the huts going very straight lines and very lined up. You see the care of this, this area of the park is absolutely fantastic and the theming for the huts looks great with the thatch roofs. It's absolutely fab and they really take your eye. And one thing I would say at this point is that these hooks are very close to the even entertainment, um, which can be quite loud and it's allowed to go until midnight. So if you've got really young ones, then it might be best to avoid those particular accommodations and go for something a bit further away. The Euro camp's a bit further away, but even that you can really still hear the, the noise. Okay, so what I'm taking to now is the amphitheatre. So the amphitheatre is where all the evening entertainment takes place. You can see the stage just over there and you can see that it has a lot of seating. I'm not sure how many seats but it was really busy last night um, when there was um, some illusion on. Um, ma magician on the stage who was great. You might be able to just see if I walk down the steps. Might be able to just see the tables that are sort of uh, just tucked away behind these railings. Now these can be booked and you can eat a, a meal here um, from the restaurant. Now the rest of the tables does have kind of table service from the deli bar which is behind us. Um, but the food isn't the same, it's more pizza, um, chicken nugget, that kind of thing. Um, if I just spin round. This is one of the restaurants, the Terracol restaurant that's 
just there. It's not open at the moment, but it opens at midday. Just behind this hatch here is where they have what they call the deli food. There's a few oversight for this, and this is where they serve the pizzas, and that's what you can have in the um, main amphitheater. I'm gonna take you through to the second of the pools. Um, and this one um, is perhaps for a bit more grown up kids, but you know, more so than the, the last one that we went to. Um, before we do that, I think we'll just get a really good view of the amphitheater from the top. The, I'd say the theme in the pine trees, uh, the pine trees, the, um, the theme in and the um, palm trees looks amazing. And the, the view from any bit of this amphitheatre is great. As you can see, it's absolutely huge. If I just pan around there. Now, what I'm gonna do, just take you up to this next pool. Now this pool has a beach bar. So if you just have a look behind me. So the beach bar, you might be able to see in the distance. Did you see the white slide? It's there to the right of the white slide or the left as you're looking at it is the beach bar and then um, there is a smaller pool for the kids at the left hand side i'm just going to spin this around to make it a bit easier so like i said there's a smaller pool for little kids and the beach bars over the far side there with the pool complex just in the middle there's uh, again three slides uh, they're not quite as um, harsh as the africa slides but even so um, really good fun, especially the white one in the middle. Um, right, we'll carry on across here. I'm going to take you down past the amphitheatre restaurant in the evening. This is pretty busy, and this bar in the middle here serves sort of like most places across the camp ice cream and varying other drinks, uh, obviously alcohol and uh, soft drinks. Um, if you want to find out what's going on in the park, uh, there's a few of these boards across the park telling you what's going on on that day and I'll fill you up full of QR codes and link you back to the website. Um, you can see that we watched Glow last night which was brilliant and there's various things on. You can get this on the website I believe. Um, so just just um, click the QR code up on there if you want. So, so I'm going to take you down to the supermarket. So this is below the amphitheatre restaurant and let's just pop down here. So this is a really well stocked supermarket and it's it's sort of as big as the um, one at the bottom of the park that I'll take you to. I'll just give you a brief look in there, I don't know if you can see it. Um, plenty of stuff in there. Is it a bit more expensive than the site? Yeah, possibly. Um, but they've got a really good bakery at the back just seeing that yeah and you can get your uh, get all your uh, uh, donuts and pan of chocolate in the morning and stuff so right let's take you away from the amphitheater now and again theme and palm trees everywhere you can these huts just look great with the thatcheroos so this is where we're coming into a slightly different area and you might be able to see I put you really high. In fact, let's walk down the middle of, of these huts. Got a little shop on site. So again, we've still got the themed huts down the side here with the thatch roofs look really great. Now these ones are brand new, like I said, for 2022. Very modern in design and will really suit some people. Um, really nicely kept outside. Bit of a deck, shaded deck like most of the other ones um, and really nice uh, walk through let's just walk through them all and see what, what's going on really well kept um, I believe they're very modern inside obviously catering to a bit of a, a different audience than maybe um, maybe some of the other ones do some people that want the you know the, the, the more modernistic look Quite a lot of these, each of these zones is absolutely huge. Um, given, basically if you want something that looks modern, something that looks a bit Afri Af African, a bit Caribbean, got a bit of everything there. So I'm gonna take you all the way across through these 
Louise. Louise. Now, it's very light around here. The fact that they're all painted white makes it really bright, especially when the sun is out and shining, because it's, um, it's an absolutely gorgeous day today. I believe that there's usually different sizes in every accommodation. I don't know about these ones, because um, we obviously haven't stayed here. We were in the Euro camp, um, but they are, um, they're lovely. If you like this kind of um, style, it's brilliant for you. Uh, okay, I'll just spin the camera around as we're coming into the next bit. Okay, so ahead of us, we've got the toilets, facilities and showers for the campsite. Um, these are all over the campsite because there's so many people camping. The, the facilities are brilliant. Um, now this looks pretty new. I don't know how long it's been here, but um, it's looking possibly new for this year, maybe last year, but um, you know, really, really well, well built and really well finished. And so we're back on the main sort of road in and out of the site. Uh, there is cars that do come up here, but they're few and far between. There's more of the buggies from the maintenance people. Oh, and we can see the land train coming past it, just on our left hand side. So people are in the land train now. We're all going, why is he filming? So, there it goes again. Loads of kids having fun. It's, it's a great ride around the park, really. But we now hit the deepest caravan and camping areas. So, um, and they are really packed on this side. Um, you know, loads of people in enjoying the sun today. And you do have people with RVs, people with tents, really ranges. It's probably really cheap holiday if you, you know if you can do it and live relatively close or in you know this this kind of part of Spain um, we've seen a lot of Dutch caravans here Dutch registrations which is which is fab met some Polish people um, right okay so the bit for all the kids you're probably seeing ahead is the sports zone now the sports zone is comprised of a few different areas you're looking directly at the basketball there. Um, and it's a great court, my son tells me, that it's absolutely fab for uh, playing on. Uh, they get some games going on there, and there's, there is, in part of the animation team, there is actually um, daily, or at least every other day, um, sessions and games. I think that's what they're doing at the moment. They're doing, they look like they're doing um, three pointers or free throws or something on there. Um, if I just pan to the left, um, we've got tennis court. This tennis court's 12 euros for, I think that gets you an hour on there. Again, really good condition. Um, and if you just look to the left here, you should be able to see the uh, volleyball court. Um, and again, I think the volleyballs can be hired from the, um, from the um, sports, oh, sports zone over there. Uh, sports shop. I'll take you over there in a second where they where they give you all the equipment. Uh, there's a little um, court for football, um, but there is another one of those, so I'll take you down there shortly. Um, across under all the shade here is the table tennis. We've got table, five table tennis tables, and they are one euro each. That's returnable for uh, for the bats, and you get that back afterwards after you've played. So, so here's the family playing basketball. Uh, play basketball. Here's the family playing table tennis. You have no idea that I'm filming, but we've utilised this a lot. <laughs> so, so this is the the main bar around the sports area. They they serve sort of pizza, all that kind of stuff. They're not open at the minute. I think they open at 12 again. Now, like I said before, the sort of little sports um, office thing here um, is operational 10 till midnight or 10 a.m. till midnight. And you get all your tokens, you pay all your, your money for your various activities. You can see we're right next to the golf, mini golf here, which is great. Um, I will post all the prices um, in the links below, um, so you've got reference to that. Then I'm just watering the outside of this, and 
golf course was great. We went on there a couple of days. Um, so over the far side, you can see uh, a little play park for kids. And if we go back around, um, that's the other side of the football court. Um, um, you can see trampolines for the kids there. And again, that's charged again, but my kids went on there and really enjoyed it. Oh, there's the play park you can see before, just from the over the other side. So, another spin around now, and we'll go into the undercover area around the bar. Now, there's T pill tables in here uh, one foosball table and an air hockey table. Um, they are really popular. The pool is two euros a game, which is kind of expensive um, over the course of a week when your kids like playing pool. Um, but great fun, nevertheless. Again, we sell ice cream at the bar here. Yeah. Um, getting down to the uh, bottom pool. This has two slides, fairly quick slides, so you would have thought this is for the, the older ones, really. Uh, but there is a lot of kids enjoying it, and there's a smaller pool where you really like the inflatables in. Uh, one slide's covered, the green one. The yellow one is open a bit, a little bit more gentle. As you see, this is even today. But loads of spaces for some beds again. No, we've not had a problem getting those. And there's lots of people enjoying the sun. Now, just down the bottom, on the other side of the slide, um, we've got a couple of things. We've got a big Astro, and we've got a tennis, another tennis court. Um, it's a bit of a smaller one. I think it's more of the, I don't know what you call it, is it soft tennis, something along those lines. And the Astro's quite a big pitch, and this is always busy um, with the kids playing games, um, which is great to see. There's a little seating area up the side there where you can watch your family if you don't fancy uh, playing as much football. So um, if we spin round, we'll head out past the little tennis. I think that's, yeah, soft tennis or some short tennis. I can't quite remember what you call it. Um, we'll just... And all the way out to the park. Well, towards the bottom of the park, because you can still see some more of the caravans to our to our right. So, like I said, these it is a large caravan and camping site as well. You perhaps don't realise that when you look at the plans online, you know, and the, all the different areas that there is. You know, it's possibly you know up to at least a third of the site is caravans and, and camping which is which is for great for people you know, who like to tour and do all those kind of things so so we're just wandering down the main stretch now and it's a nice cobbled area with um uh, with with trees the palm trees again lining the area which is obviously the theme throughout the park which just gives it you just you just know you're on holiday if you see it like this and obviously when the weather is like this it is absolutely beautiful there is not a cloud in the sky so i will take you to the right here let me just spin you around okay so this is another of the pools this is again you would say this pool is for little ones Again, a lot of um, some beds. You can just see on our left there is another of the bars that I think they do some deli food as well. Um, each of the pools do, do have showers. You can just see them on the right hand side there. Um, I'm going to walk around this edge of the pool so not to interrupt people having fun. There's a nice, nice feature that we're just going around the outside of here. Now, there's no big slides in this bit like there is in the others. Um, let me just come back down. Uh, but there's this fantastic waterfall that I hope you can still hear me over the sound of that. And um, this is really nice because this is the pool you see when you come in from the south end of the site. Um, and right at the bottom of this pool is is a restaurant. So you can have your lunch, watch over the little ones. Oh, there is there is a little slide there. So that's another little little pool. It's a nice good theme is that the kids have. There's always an area for the little ones, and not just the huge slides for the older ones. 
Um, I'm just going to take you through the restaurant. We had a good meal here. They had all the selection across all the restaurants on site. Um, and um, it wasn't cheap, I'm not going to lie. Um, but it was it was a good meal. And unfortunately, you will pay that when you're on site. Uh, you'll pay the extra, extra money. So we're just going to walk out the bottom of site a little bit before I take you back in. And this will be... Uh, where you get into the beach um, just behind me that's the main reception to the park and if I just spin around a little bit you can see that the main reception so the southern reception to the park is here it's not quite as big as the um, the, the one up in Africa but people do um, are, well they look as though they're checking in or certainly um, they're helping them out at the information desk over there. Now, just to the uh, right of the main reception, just watch you walking across the road. To the right of the main reception is the car parking area, and I think the area where the land train stops. So, yeah, just just over there is the um, and there's a, a bike biker um, stopping area, parking area where you can lock your bikes up to come to this end of site. Um, so we, I'll take you out of the park. This is this is where the park essentially starts on the southern side, and this is we're at the sort of north end. If you're looking at the map, north end of Cambrils, the south end of Salou, where we are here. You might just be able to see in the distance the sea. Uh, it's only a couple of hundred metres to the beach. It's a bit windy here, so apologies for that. Uh, there's a really useful supermarket just on our right hand side. Get across this road without it being getting in front of all the bikes. Nice supermarket there. These Michelangelo supermarkets are all over um, Salou. Uh, very popular. They're sort of maybe a, a larger sort of local, you know, Sainsbury's local, Tesco's Express, that kind of thing. Um, but it uh, has a good selection, maybe a little better than the site. Um, and you can see we're looking down the main street here in Salou. Uh, this this is basically like a promenade from that point onwards. And it continues all the way down the front. Um, I will just go over the crossing here. It's a pretty big road, so you have to be very careful on the traffic coming either way, and they don't always stop for, for those uh, crossings. Now, uh, bringing you out to the beach here, um, there's a few shops around here, but a lot of restaurants. Um, now, this is good. One. Unfortunately, we didn't use this restaurant here, Central uh, Cafe. Um, but it looks as though it, it, it could have been really nice, which is a bit of a strange shape, but you know, that's how things go. Okay, so behind me, we're kind of on the cycle path, and the cycle path goes all the way into Cambrils and all the way to Salou. Um, now, I'm going to flip you around for the beach because this is, this is fantastic. Here we go, this is the beach. Now on our left is the beach bar for the site. So you'll find the beach bars all the way down the site. Um, and they will be selling basically hot dogs, you know, that kind of thing, pizza slices. But you see it's very busy today. But the sand is absolutely fantastic. You can see, you can see all the way down to Salou there. Um, all the way down to Cambrils in the distance. Um, the um, the sand is actually warm today. It's absolutely lovely. I think we're going to be coming down a little bit later. Um, again, the palm trees lining the uh, promenade. You know, it really gives you a holiday feeling. You know, when you when you see such um, great, you know, the trees and the decorations and all this kind of thing, it really gives you a feel for, for the place. Uh, there's a lot of hotels down the front, a lot of bars, a lot of restaurants, you're never um, struggling for choice. Um, but you have to be wary of the bikes coming down here because they do come down rather quickly. Um, just down there near the Campbell sign, you usually have some street traders uh, selling various goods, let's say. Um, right, I'm going to take you back up into site. Sorry. 
<laughs> Let's try and get around everything. You can see the amount of bikes that are on site here. So we're going to walk back to site here and you can just see the beach in the background, which is absolutely fab. And, and all the way down the main road behind me, this is where all the buses come. You can possibly see, um, if I flip the camera around, the Plana stop, which is the buses either way. So the, the Plana stop is across the road there, and there is one just down this side of the road, a bit further down, just if you wanted to go down to Campbell's. A uh, selection of beach shops, you can get all your inflatables on the front there, but they will, you know, they will want to keep you in their shop once you're in. Um, so just beware of that. Okay, so we're going to try and cross this road. You can see how busy the road is at this time. But let's just go for it. Everybody else is crossing, so we're just going to give it a go. Um, <coughs> walk back into, into sight. It's obviously noticeably different the amount of traffic that's down this end than up at the Africa end. And I think you need if you're coming to to try and utilize the other end to get your taxis you know rather than this end because it could be very difficult and there's so many people here that it can be quite tricky to flag taxis down um, so as you come back onto site you'll be able to see that we cross some train lines now I must admit I haven't seen a train going going down these train lines but you do have to be a little bit wary when you're crossing just in case uh, anything does come your way right so let's let's head back into site and i'm i'm going to take you around the area with the supermarket and the doctors i think there's a laundrette there um and i'll see what that looks like just let me spin the camera around so we're just going past the um supermarket which is probably similar size to the one under the amphitheater um, and stocks, good range of stuff. Again, you'll you'll pay um, you'll pay site prices. You know that's that's how it is. You know if you want to go into Salou, you might get better deals on various um, foods, but the convenience is just great having all these on site. Right. So next to me, you can see the this is the biggest shop on site selling various beachwear, inflatables, all that kind of thing. But once again. You're not allowed the inflatables in the pools, which seems kind of strange that they're selling them. I'm guessing it's just for going into the sea, possibly. Um, but yeah, a bit of a weird one that. But there's all kinds of magazines and newspapers and sunglasses and what have you in there. So walking up the side, and we're walking up the side of the other pool. So you can see everybody having fun in there again. So we've got the doctor on the left hand side. Then there's the laundrette. Um, where people are doing a lot of laundry in there. I suppose if you're staying for a couple of weeks, you may need to, you know, wash your clothes at least once, especially if you've got young kids. Uh, throughout site, they've got toilets, as you'd expect, and um, also recycling points, which is actually really nice, you know, separating your various glasses and papers because um, you got, do go through a lot of bottles especially especially um, water bottles you can buy in all the supermarkets even though the, the tap water I believe is absolutely fine to use now we're walking up through another area the campsite the camping and caravan area uh, again lined with the palm trees you can probably see that you know, it just it just looks fab uh, you're able to see just going down the right there is quite a lot of electric scooters in Salou. Now the apparently the Spanish insist that they, you wear helmets with them. Um, I'm not sure if it's law but a lot of people abide by it. Maybe not people that are just going through the site. Um, you know but they, they are a good mode of transporting about you know even into Salou but you kind of feel that it takes your life into your own hands um, just given how busy not necessarily cars but bikes and tourists if you go on the the path the bike path it does get really quite quite busy especially if you're one of those and you also need to be careful that you don't get mowed down by one so you really have to have your wits about you when you're out and about 
So we're coming through this again. This is still a big part of the site, the caravan section, um, which is which is like I say, it's absolutely great for, for caravans. In fact, let me spin it around because I think we've seen the land train for the uh, for the third. So we can see it coming past there. I'm going to go up on these steps and uh, and see if we can see it coming past. You get quite a good view of the. Uh, top of the site as well so here he comes he must think that we're uh, following him so there you go there he is all the people i wonder if they're still the same people on board that they were before they're all going past followed by some cyclists playing a bit of music on there which is great so we'll just head up here because to get up to the other section of the park you have to to obviously head up through you know these bits or up the main strips now i've been taking you a slightly different way than we came out of the park which which i hope is good just to show you you know how it how it looks um, um so again loads of caravans and camping which is fab um again the the trees and the decoration slightly different than this bit um but we're going to go up to the left here um, we're going to be heading towards another of the areas and if I'm correct because we haven't stayed in this bit I'll try to take you up to the uh, the Carib or the Caribbean or the Carib however you want to pronounce it um, we'll take you up to that area and have a quick look at the accommodation there um, again we got toilet box behind us. There, I believe they are. They are throughout the park, which is absolutely fab. Um, so if you're uh, if you're caravan and camping, you don't want to be trekking three miles to find um, to find the nearest toilet, shower, etc., etc. So I can just see in the distance some of the Caribbean. I'm going to call them Caribbean. Some of the Caribbean style properties. Now these are really colourful ones, as you'd expect um, and they're all located on this left hand side so let me spin you around so as we just come up here you might see them just poking through the trees over there with a the blue roof now they are all multicolored there's a lot of yellows blues greens in all the properties they look really nice so on the left on the right and straight on so we'll head straight up this main um section just notice just to take note to over to the right is the area where they do all the spa treatments so you can see just in there so if that's if that's your thing then that's the place to go i've seen leaflets about the site um advertising that so into the Caribbean area and we've got these these huts look absolutely I should call them huts I'm really being a bit harsh on them um lodges I guess um but they look absolutely fantastic and um, they're quite they look quite big as well these ones I know there's a few different sizes of huts here lodges I should say um but again they've changed the sort of the plants plants here and the bushes and the trees they do look and the theming is in keeping with all of these lodges uh, as you can see absolutely massive area i think i think if we were going for some now these are furthest away now these ones they are furthest away from the entertainment area probably the quietest so the people that are over here you know, probably don't want to be too close to the night time so far, or just want a bit of a break when uh, when the day is over. But there's it's a really nice atmosphere, nice and quiet, um, which is which is really nice. I think if we come back here, I think we might look at this particular area because it's um, yeah, it's just far enough away from the entertainment and the pools and stuff um, to be nice and quiet. But you know. If you want to get there, you're there in five minutes tops. 
Um, so we are coming out of the Caribbean area. So I'm just going to flip you around and heading into, I have to reference this because I'm not 100% <laughs> So we're heading into, I think the Polynesia area here. Have a look on the map. But look at the theme in here. And these are all, all the tents. Um, I apologise, this is into Africa area. Um, and these are tent setups. Now, I've not been inside, but it kind of looks like it is straight tents rather than sort of tents round a, round a, a hut itself, which are really nice theme. And people who like caravan, sorry, who like camping will really enjoy this. You can see that there's a Jeep um, just uh, parked up there to carry on the theme in, which looks great. Um, now these, there's only a few of these, I can only see, well certainly straight in front of me there's only four, but I know there's a couple behind. Now off to our left, i just take you down over here. I think these are still part of the Africa um, area, you can see the theming on the outside and the names of the various uh, um, uh, lodges. It, it looks like they've got slightly different decks and canopies. Again, really nice. You might be able to hear the Africa pool in the background because we're getting quite close to that. Uh, so these guys are close to that pool um, and, you know, it, straight in, you know, it's, it's straight from your lodge, straight into the pool, which is, which is great. Again, probably far enough away um, to be nice and quiet in the evening uh, for the entertainment. Um, and the, I mean, you have to look at the theming. It's absolutely fantastic. The artwork on the outside of the, the buildings is, is great and, and differs from building to building. Um, absolutely fab. So I'm just walking back up the main stretch here, just up to the right. You can see the side of the Africa pool, one of those slides. That is a great slide, it's really quick. And people enjoying the sunny weather today in Salou. Uh, that's the one thing with Salou, that you're not guaranteed sun everywhere, but here seems to be a decent bet if you want um, to catch a few rays. Because <laughs> we've been here seven days and haven't seen any um, any rain at all so um, the weather is just fantastic but you have to get your sun cream and get protected or you will burn without a shadow of a doubt you will burn <laughs> right okay so we're co actually coming up by the side of reception here so I'm just gonna spin you around again so over here we've got some more huts these are the Maasai huts still clusters Africa now these maybe look a, a step down from uh, the, the, the huts we've just seen, the lodges we've just seen. Um, but nevertheless, they still look absolutely great. You can see them, the theming again is good. It's slightly different, um, not but different in a really good way. Um, <clears throat> so they look as though they're in quite a large, large area over there. And I'm not gonna take you through all of it, but there's, again, they're away from the entertainment. It might be a bit quieter over there if people are looking for that on their holiday. So we are currently on the other side of reception, which is, which is just in there. Some people are queuing to either come in or come out. Now, when you come, you can store your luggage um, around this side. And the luggage gets stored in the back so if your flight is early or late and your accommodation isn't ready they quite happily give you um, free storage while you go off and enjoy the park um, just down there you can see where the, the bikes are just at the entrance to the park and you will just hire those from reception um, uh, for a few euros a day it can obviously add up if you've got lots of um, members of your family so just be aware about that um, but it's a very easy and convenient way to to get about the resort and get about Salou and Camberwell so we're coming past the restaurant again now we're going to take you around to the Eurocamp accommodation which is 
just running to the left. We'll also take past the, there's two things here besides the restaurant. There's the pizzeria that sells pizzas and sells chicken. And that's coming up on the left. Yeah, so let me just make sure you can see that. So the pizzeria is off to the left hand side there. Um, they, they were okay, we, we had a good lunch stack. Um, and they are obviously, they're selling chickens as well that are on the spit roast in the background. Again, not particularly cheap, but um, an easy quick meal. Uh, the bakery's right next to it. And you can see that they have loads of stuff in there. Um, now they have a lot of produce, come at eight o'clock in the morning and it's piled high with donuts and pastries, but it looks like they've still got loads now, to be honest. Um, mini market here. Uh, this isn't as big as, as the other ones, um, but um, still pretty well stocked if you want to just get quick, get your milk and that kind of thing. If I spin around, this is the Eurocamp section. This is where we were staying. Um, and generally how it works is down to the right, um, on the right hand side is all of the Azure XLs, which is just down there. Um, I'll just wander down here, even though we've checked out. The, so the XLs are the three beds, um, and on the left is the two bed Azures, and they stretch all the way down to the bottom. Um, they also go back the other way. So we'll just cut through site here. Uh, Eurocamp have quite a, a large area. Uh, now, they are very much independent of the site itself and they will advise you when you check in that any problems that you have you go to Eurocamp you don't go to Sangul if it's regarding your your lodge. Now the the reps are based over oh, there's a few of them there now reps are based over over here <laughs> Um, so they're based in this tent, they're here several times throughout the day um, and people are checking in and just getting information, you can help get taxis there and that kind of stuff um, and they will always be really helpful. They only have one of these aspect caravans or lodges uh, that I can see, now these are the new style. Um, really nice inside um, similar size to the XLs I think um, and I presume they're getting more on site uh, down there your camp stretches on for quite a way um, again lots of the two bed Azures I think they are really popular um, you know maybe more so than the XLs but we're glad as a family four we had loads of space with the XL version um, so if you're a family four, it may be a bit of a squeeze in the smaller one, but I think it'd probably be adequate. Um, but family, any bigger than that, you'd want an XL version. So we're back up to the Africa pool here. I've done a full lap round. I hope I haven't missed anything out there. I've tried to get everything in that we could possibly do. Um, and hopefully this has helped with a full tour of Sanguli. A resort and helps make your mind up about coming here. We've had a great time here. The pools have been great. The sports have been great. The entertainment's been fab. Um, so if you can get a decent deal and some cheap flights, I think it's it's a no-brainer to come here. And uh, yeah, check it out. All right, thanks very much. Bye.